Okay, welcome everyone to the Health Committee hearing of the Hawaii State Senate. I am Senator Jared Keohokalole, Chair of the Committee. This Zoom meeting and YouTube live stream event will include uh, the following agenda, the Monday, February 8th, 1 p.m. health agenda. The members of the committee who are attending are Vice Chair, Senator Rosalind Baker, um, Member Senator Sharon Moriwaki, Senator Kurt Favela, and I don't see her at the moment, but uh, we also have Senator Joyce San Buenaventura on the committee. This meeting, including the audio and video of remote participants is being streamed live on YouTube. You will find links to the viewing options for all Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website. In the unlikely event that we must abruptly end this hearing due to major technical difficulties, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business on Wednesday, February 10th at 1.15 p.m. And public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. Uh, for the individuals testify testifying remotely, welcome. All testifier audio will be muted and video disabled until it is your turn to testify. There is a two minute time limit per testifier. We have a large agenda with a lot of, a number of really important uh, bills today. So I'd ask that you help us out and um, either stand on your testimony or include uh, or focus on comments uh, that were not received in the written testimony, which has been provided to all of the members and we have reviewed. If there are temporary technical glitches during your turn, uh, we may have to move on to the next person due to time constraints, uh, but please be patient with us. If we get you back online, we'll try and offer you the opportunity to finish up. I will be reading a list of people who have submitted written testimony for each measure. We apologize if the closed captioning doesn't accurately transcribe the names. And if you're interested in reviewing the written testimony, please go to the legislature's website at www.capital.hawaii.gov. You'll find a link to testimony on the status page for the, for the measure. And members, as always, please wait to ask your questions until we've gone through all the testifiers. And I think what we're gonna do today is I'm going to go through the testifiers uh, who submitted on time and indicated that they are present. Then I will read the names of the testifiers who submitted testimony uh, but indicated they will not be present for the record. And then we'll do the same for the late testimony. Uh, so to start off, we will begin with Senate Bill uh, 1153, making an emergency appropriation to the Department of Health for the EMS Services and Injury, Injury Prevention System branch. And looks like first we have the Department of Health Health Resources Administration in support. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair and Vice Chair. This is Dr. Alvin C. Bronstein. I'm the Branch Chief for, for Emergency Medical Services and Injury Prevention for the Department of Health. And our ask was for an emergency appropriation to make our budget whole for fiscal year 21 at 6.5 for $6.4 million. However, we've been able to do some budgetary realignment and have been able to decrease this ask by 25% to, to uh, $4.8 million. So thank you very much for the opportunity to testify. Thank you, Dr. Bronstein, good news. Uh, that's all the testimony we've received on this measure. Members, are there any questions? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna to move to the next bill, SB 1156, uh, making an emergency appropriation to the Department of Health uh, to provide funds for supplies, personnel, equipment, and related effects to implement the COVID-19 vaccination plan. First up, we have the Department of Health. This is the committee, Lauren Kim, uh, testifying on behalf of Director Char. The department stands on its testimony and general support. We are unable to provide more, uh, more accurate or more specific figures. And we will continue to work with the legislature as needs um, evolve and our pandemic responses are sharpening. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Testifying in support from the Hawaii Primary Care Association is Eric Abe. That's all the testimony we've received. Is there anyone else on the call who would like to testify? Seeing none, members questions? Okay, moving to the next measure, SB 1157, 
making an emergency appropriation to the Department of Health related to COVID-19 expenditures. Uh, this is to continue funding for various uh, coronavirus pandemic related programs and activities. Uh, Department of Health in support. Department will stand on its testimony in support, thank you. We also have supportive testimony from the Hawaii Primary Care Association. And that's all the testimony we've received on this measure. Is there anyone else on the call who would like to testify? Members, questions? Okay, moving along, SB 1117 makes an appropriation to the Office of the Governor relating to COVID-19 expenses. This provides an uh, emergency appropriation for uh, governor's office operations related to the pandemic. Uh, and in support, we have the Hawaii Primary Care Association. Uh, that's all the submitted testimony I believe we have here on this measure. Is there anyone else on the call who would like to testify? Okay, seeing none, any questions members? Okay. Moving on to the next measure, SB 1234, relating to pandemic response. This authorizes the use of funds appropriated from the emergency and budget reserve fund from amounts received by the state from the CARES Act for the purchase and distribution of PPE and industrial hygiene products to state departments and agencies. First up in support, we have the Hawaii Department of Defense. Okay, we also have uh, testimony and support from the Department of Budget and Finance, the Office of Community Services, Department of Labor in support, the State Procurement Office in support, the Hawaii Primary Care Association in support, um, also offering late testimony and support, the Department of Health. Okay, uh, also in support, the Department of Education and Dr. Jim Sean. Okay, that's all the testimony we've received on this measure. Is there anyone else who would like to testify? Okay, members, any questions? Uh, Senator Sandler. I have a question. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, do we have HIEMA on or Department of Defense on um, testifying, or is there anybody live testifying on this measure? No. You know, we did okay. have the DOD indicate that they were they intended to testify, but I don't think they're on the call. Okay. Um, I I just want to make a comment. Then uh, I had an informational briefing on the. On, on basically a pandemic response and the industrial hygiene products. And Hyema was, and I didn't see them testify, was the one who basically bought the supplies and were distributing it. And so I just wanted to know one, didn't the governor reduce this 100 million down to 60 million by line item veto? And the second was how much is left after the distributions, that's all but nobody's here to respond, so thank you. Okay, members, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna move to the next measure, uh, SB 1018. Oh, I think I got the testimony I'm confused. So SB 1018, relating to effective government operations. This requires the Department of Health to establish a reorganization pilot project to reorganize the Department of Health Behavioral Health Services Administration. Uh, first up, we have the Department of Health. Aloha Chair Lauren Kim again. Uh, the department supports this measure. We respectfully request amendments that expand the reorganization pilot to all major administrative divisions of the Department of Health. And we concur with some of the concerns of the State Procurement Office on language that was overly broad and intentionally broad on exemption from procurement. Uh, thank you, and I'm available for questions. Thank you. Uh, next testifier, we have the State Procurement Office, Bonnie Kahakui. 
Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. The State Procurement Office uh, stands by its written testimony in opposition of the exemption language, but does provide other comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we also have supportive testimony from Dr. Jim Sean. And late testimony and support from the Hawaii Psychological Association. That's all the testimony we've received. Is there anyone else on the call who would like to testify? Seeing none, members, any questions? Uh, Chair, I do. Okay, Senator Moriwaki. Um, to uh, Bonnie Kakui. Uh, uh, Bonnie, in terms of the um, opposition to the overly broad language in the exemption from 103D and F, could you clarify that there could be some amendment to the, to the bill so that we can move this along? Because I think this is a good pilot project. Well, it just depends on what the, the new amendments are, but we do not, we are not in favor of broad exemption from all of 103D or 103F. So um, uh, is there language that you could be working with the department as they move to um, look at aligning their contracts? I think that was their, their intent. And can we amend this section so that it would include that and perhaps work with the chairs to see how we could amend the we yeah, can move a, this before. Yes, we had a conversation with Edward, I believe it was on Friday, that we would work with him, but I don't I don't necessarily think it needs to be an amendment in the bill as we can uh, provide exemptions. Outside. That's already a, our ability to do so. Uh, so, so Chair, yeah, if, sure. if I could ask um, uh, Eddie, Eddie Mercerol, I see him on, on to see how ahead, we Eddie. could get that. Address. Yes, Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members, Eddie Mercero, Behavioral Health Administration. We did have a um, we did have a very good conversation with Bonnie on Friday um, afternoon, and we believe we we agree as Lauren uh, stated that the exemptions may have been overly broad to be misinterpreted as us being able to just do all new procurements with that exemption. Um, and so the focus really is to use, uh, is to align contracts as we do these reorganizations so that we can be more uh, efficient and effective. And uh, Bonnie and I had a good conversation. And so I think that actually, as long as we continue to um, coordinate across the two uh, programs, I think we'll be able to achieve the goals um, in that area. The main priority is for us to be able to um, do uh, expedited reorganizations through um, this pilot project. Thank you. So are you um, deleting that exemption um, language from the bill or are you uh, clarifying it that you will be working with the state procurement office in um, addressing the contract issues? I'll, I'll, I'll def defer a little bit to, to Bonnie from SPO as well, but I think, and also Lauren, but I think that we would be, it would be workable to have the language just say that SPO and the Department of Health will work together to assure that we can align those contracts. Okay. That's Thank correct. You. In my testimony, we did say that, that we will work with the administration to align their existing multiple contracts um, to reduce, you know, the duplicative contracts. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Okay, members, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move to the next measure, which is SB 1231 related to statewide health planning. This provides flexibility to deploy statewide health planning and resource development programs and resources. First up, we have the Department of Health in support. Good afternoon, Chair. The department stands on its testimony in support and would like to clarify that we see this measure as a safety net bill uh, to make sure that the essential functions that SHIPTA currently provides uh, still continue despite some of the budget negotiations that are underway. Thank you for the opportunity to testify and I'll stand by for questions. Thank you. We have the State Health Planning and Development Agency in opposition. Go ahead, Serafin. Can you please unmute? Thank you. Good afternoon. 
uh, we stand on our testimony in opposition. Thank you. Uh, next offering, uh, let me see. Also in opposition, we have Hawaii Pacific Health. Good afternoon, Chair. Um, this is Mike Robinson. Um, sorry, video. Good afternoon. This is Mike Robinson with Hawaii Pacific Health on behalf of Ray Vara, who could not uh, make it today. Um, I will stand at our written testimony in opposition to 12, SB 1231 and we'll be here for any questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, and thank you for activating your video. Next, we have the Queen's Health Systems. JC? Uh, good afternoon, Chair and Vice Chair. Uh, we'll stand on a written testimony, just uh, noting our concerns with the voluntary nature of the language in the bill and uh, our preference that the CON process, uh, process uh, remain in place. Here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Ohana Pacific Management Company, Wesley Lowell. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you very much for allowing me to testify. Just some quick comments uh, to supplement my written testimony. Um, I was involved in a fairly um, controversial CON many years back, which was supported by some high-ranking executive branch officials. Um, I think uh, the ship does independence. Um, it was important to, um, to follow the criteria as opposed to being uh, represented by special interests. So uh, we uh, um, are in opposition to um, the, um, the language. Thank you. that in our testifier uh, information because I think we accidentally have you uh, in support, which is wrong. Uh, and finally, we have Michael Duick offering comments. Oh, hi, thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. I appreciate uh, the time that you've given me today. Um, I stand by my written testimony expressing my concerns um, uh, briefly, I, I'm an internist that was recruited here uh, due to the uh, shortage of physicians back in uh, 2004. And over the past decade, um, my entire practice has revolved around hospice and palliative care. Um, I've, I've submitted uh, four, four certificate of need applications pertaining to hospice care. And at all times, um, I found that the CON process has uh, worked very well, um, has protected the integrity and has led to, to what I feel to be better provision of this very special type of care here in our state. And uh, for these reasons, um, my hope is that SHIPTA and the mandatory COM process stay intact. Um, I'll be available for any questions. And again, I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. So we also have a number of testifiers who submitted testimony, but indicated that they would not be present. Uh, we have the Healthcare Association of Hawaii, Paige Hecathorn Choi, and the Hawaii Primary Care Association, Eric Abe, offering comments. Navi in Hawaii, in opposition. Jay Kamailani Boyd, in opposition. Ron Bush, in opposition. Uh, for HMSA, Matthew Sasaki, offering comments. Uh, Kapi'olani Medical Center, in opposition. And Wilcox Medical Center, in opposition. We also have late testimony submitted from the Health Committee of the Democratic Party of Hawaii, the Hawaii Government Employees Association, Hospice Maui, Inc. Uh, uh, the HGEA and the Democratic Party of Hawaii in opposition, Hospice Maui, Inc. and North Hawaii Hospice, Inc. offering comments. Eric, Aaron Hamilton offering comments. Michael Gibson, Stephen Kemble, Emmeline Kim, Kurt Morimoto, and David Kingdon all in opposition. That's all the testimony uh, we've received that I can see. Is there anyone else on the call who would like to testify? Seeing none, members, questions? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna move on to SB 138 relating to tobacco taxes. This increases the cigarette and tobacco tax on cigarettes and little cigars by five cents beginning July 1st, 2021 and allocates excise tax revenue generated at the increased rate to specified health improvement purposes beginning July 1st, 2021. First up, we have the Department of Health in support. Thank you, Senator um, Keoha Kalole and um, Vice Chair Senator Baker. Um, the Department of Health um, 
I'm Lola Irvin with the Department of Health speaking on behalf of Director Char and the Department of Health supports this measure and appreciates that um, the measure proposes to increase the tax on cigarettes, um, knowing that that is one of the most um, effective policies for reducing youth use of cigarettes. In Hawaii, about 2,300 youth annually um, start smoking cigarettes and experiment with them, and one in three will um, continue and um, die prematurely um, from tobacco-related causes. Coupled with that, now we have COVID-19, which increases a person's risk um, for complications and for outcomes if someone is smoking. So uh, we know that increasing the tax will actually also help people who are smoking to rethink um, smoking. And when they need help, Hawaii does provide a really great comprehensive quit line, 1-800-QUIT-NOW. And so I wanna also thank um, the legislators who have made that possible so that we do have support for people who want to quit. Should this pass, we'll be there for them. We also have support for youth through a text program and um, it is nationally available and tested. So we're really glad um, that we can also provide that support for people who want to quit. So thank you so much for the opportunity to provide testimony. Thank you, Lola. Uh, next, we have offering comments, the Department of Taxation. Good afternoon, Chair. Uh, Jacob Hurlitz on behalf of the Department of Taxation will stand on our written testimony requesting a July 1, 2022 effective date. Thank you, I'm available for questions. Thank you very much. Next, we have the University of Hawaii in support. Uh, this is Dr. Holcomb, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Um, we stand on our uh, testimony in support of this uh, proposed legislation. Thank you very much. The Hawaii Public Health Institute in support. Hi, thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Jessica Yamauchi with the Hawaii Public Health Institute that houses the Coalition for Tobacco-Free Hawaii. We are in strong support of this measure, uh, echoing most of the reasons that uh, the Department of Health already provided. I just wanted to add um, that there is public support for this tax increase. Um, according to an independent public opinion poll commissioned by the coalition, 82% of registered Hawaii voters support an increase in cigarette taxes. And with the COVID-19 pandemic, measures to improve health are of increased importance as COVID-19 is an infectious disease that primarily attacks the lungs, cigarette use is especially concerning. Thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony and strong support. Thank you very much. Uh, testifying for Aloha Care in support. Peggy Mirzwa. Hi Chair, she's not in the room. Okay, thank you. We also have uh, supporting testimony from HHSC, Dr. Linda Rosen, uh, the American Heart Association in support, the Hawaii Primary Care Association offering comments, uh, other supporting testimony from the Hawaii Dental Association, the American Cancer Society, Cancer Action Network, Hawaii Pacific, the Hawaii Medical Association, and individual testimony in support from Forrest Batts, Jaris Hedges, and Alan Johnson. Also offering individual testimony in opposition, Jeff Stevens, Monica Lopez, and Jessica Chang. Uh, in addition, we have late testimony from the Retail Merchants of Hawaii in opposition. Uh, also in opposition are Alex Abe, Susan Larson, Kay Nguyen, Anthony Orozco, and Michael Ziner. And offering late testimony in support, Lee Buenconsejo Lum, uh, Catherine Zhang, and Nash Witten. That's all the testimony we've received. Is there anyone on the call who would like to testify? Okay, seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, moving along, the next measure is SB 970 relating to telehealth. This authorizes the establishment of a physician-patient relationship, uh, physician-patient relationship via a telehealth interaction if the physician is licensed to practice medicine in the state of Hawaii. Uh, first up in support, the Department of Health. The department will stand on its testimony and general support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also in support, the DCCA Professional Vocational Licensing Hawaii Medical Board, Ms. Kyoki. 
Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. The board will stand on its written testimony in support of this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Queens Health Systems. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair. Uh, Queen stands in strong support of this bill. We'll defer to our written testimony. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kaiser Permanente. In support. Sorry, Chair, Jonathan Ching. Yep, yeah, we'll stand on our written testimony in support. Thank you. Uh, for AARP Hawaii, in support, Audrey Suga Nakagawa. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the committee. Audrey Suga Nakagawa, Advocacy Director of AARP Hawaii. We stand in strong support. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys are all in such good cadence. You make this seem easy. Uh, the Healthcare Association of Hawaii, also in support. Thank you, Chair. I'm afraid I'm going to throw off the cadence now. I feel like I was uh, put on the spot to make sure it was all still um, going exactly as, as planned. But we just want to thank you uh, for the opportunity to provide supportive testimony. This is actually a priority bill for the Healthcare Association of Hawaii and its members. You know, during the pandemic, the ability of residents in Hawaii to use telehealth has been critical. And we believe that there is a permanent shift towards telehealth. We've already been uh, one of the most progressive states in uh, providing telehealth to residents. Um, so we just think that this bill provides a really clean, simple change just to make sure that instead of a negative uh, in the physician practice of medicine, um, saying you can't do this unless, we're just changing it to a much more clear affirmative that you can establish that uh, physician-patient relationship uh, via telehealth. So um, we really appreciate uh, your committee for hearing this bill um, and we're available for any questions that you guys might have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next we have, okay, yeah, that's all the testimony for individuals who indicated they would be here. We also have supportive testimony from Dr. Linda Rosen of HHSC. Uh, Hawaii Pacific Health in support, and uh, the Hawaii Substance Abuse Coalition in support, and late testimony from Ray Ogai in support. That's all the testimony we've received. Members, are there any questions? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move to SB 1258 relating to telehealth. This, allow this allows for standard telephone contacts for telehealth purposes. Uh, first up, we have HMSA. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. I'm Matt Sasaki with HMSA. We'll stand on our written testimony and remain available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, AARP Hawaii in support. Hi. Uh, again, this is Audrey Suganakaga from AARP Hawaii, and we stand in strong support of this measure. Uh, we know that the pandemic has really expanded the use of telehealth, and going moving forward, we think this is going to be continued on. I think allowing telephone as another option for our, our seniors who don't have access to uh, technology or uh, uh, broadband access uh, would really benefit from having this device be used instead. So thank you again for the opportunity to support this bill. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Waianae Coast Comprehensive Health Center, Dr. Stephen Bradley. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee. Um, I have been the uh, Chief Medical Officer of uh, the Waianae Coast Comprehensive uh, Health Center uh, for many years and have been at the center for 27 years. Uh, providing uh, adult primary care. I've seen the success we've had in um, pro uh, basically prolonging lifespan and uh, as healthy as possible over all these decades that I've worked there. Um, telehealth has turned us around. You know, we have a lot of fear and justified fear for the uh, kapuna coming in and seeing uh, our providers face to face. What um, really has struck is in a disadvantaged area such as Waianae, the high incidence of multiple chronic diseases in uh, one of, in the largest Hawaiian, Native Hawaiian population in the world. And as you all know, uh, Native Hawaiians are, are uh, victims of chronic disease 10 years earlier than like populations. Um, the thing that happens though is with the wonder of uh, telehealth is that uh, not everybody is able to partake, especially in the Kapuna population. We have an uh, electronic medical record that we've had for well over 20 years, working very successfully. And for us, uh, a telephone visit is not a chit-chat visit. 
Telephone visit is done with the provider actively on their electronic medical record while they're in contact with the patient. Therefore, they're allowed to review the whole record. They're allowed, they're able to uh, order uh, labs, x-rays, referrals, able to give counseling, able to respond. And we also have been very careful about keeping a log of why we could not do a televideo, for example, and why we had to um, go back to uh, a telephone visit. And that's in uh, our written testimony. But as you can see, 16% of our population does not even have a way to connect through televideo. And I uh, personally have that happen quite often with my kapunas, that uh, they only have a landline at home, not even a cell phone. So this is a vital... Um, Dr. Bradley, uh, can you please finish up? Sure. And uh, so just we have guidelines about using EMR, about using telephonic visits, why we do it. We're very much in control of it. And again, it's an extension of our electronic medical records, full visit for every patient. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next in support, the Hawaii Psychological Association. Okay. Aloha, Senator Kiho Kalohale, uh, Senator Baker and members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to add a few comments to what I submitted in my testimony. Way back in the 1990s, when I was working as a psychologist at Triple Army Medical Center, we started to provide mental health services via telehealth to service members and their families that covered over 50% of the Earth's surface. Back then, when connecting to some of the Pacific Islands and even Japan or Korea, we were happy if the remote site simply had a stable phone line. To do our work, we had to use these small video phones that sent audio and video over a standard phone line. And in about 80% of the time, the video was terrible, but in general, we could hear the patients fairly well. And we were able to provide our psychological treatment with just the audio. While it's nice to have an image of the patient to look at and to see their facial gestures and other nonverbal signals, we found that in most situations, it is not required to have the video, just the audio. Without the ability for us to provide services over a phone, we couldn't have done our job. And it would have made no sense if Tripler had told us, we're not going to pay you your salary when you only use a phone to take care of your patients. As you heard from uh, the representative from the Waianae Coast, fast forwarding back to 2021, even now there are many people in Hawaii that don't have broadband access or unlimited cell phone data plans. For them, doing a video conference is extremely difficult. And if a patient is elderly, the process can be difficult even with good bandwidth. Um, and even for myself, uh, moderately knowledgeable about Zoom and video conferences, the connections often don't work. Uh, myself and my spouse have scheduled video conferences with our primary care and specialist doctors that for whatever technical reason, uh, we had to revert to a phone call. And so finally, we know from experience and research that mental health services delivered by phone are effective. Even in crisis situations, uh, like crisis hotlines, they're phone-based. Even the Golden Gate Bridge has a suicide hotline that is phone-based. It's not a video call, it's just a phone. It's effective, it works. And for that reason, there is absolutely no reason why telephone-based healthcare should not be reimbursed. We strongly support the bill. And while we take no position on the exclusion of text-based treatment interventions, there should be okay. some accommodation made for those who are deaf or hard of hearing. Thank you, Thank you for allowing me to testify. Thank you. We also have testimony and support from the Hawaii Primary Care Association, the Hawaii Substance Abuse Coalition, and late testimony offering comments from DHS uh, MedQuest Division, and supportive testimony from Jessica Ewan and Ray Ogai. That's all the testimony we've received. Members, are there any questions? Senator San Buenaventura. Thank you. Is Department of Health, Lauren Kim, are you available? Answer questions. Um, I see him there. Thank you, Lauren. Yes. So we, Hi. yes. Hi. So remember I had my telehealth um, town hall last year. And the big question we had on, tele, on telehealth, this was before COVID-19 came in, was whether or not Medicare or Medicaid, and I see Judy Moore Peterson put in something for Medicaid, but what about Medicare? Will they cover telehealth when there is no, I mean, they had a hard time even with broadband. What about if we pass this law that's only for audio? Will Medicare cover it? 
I don't have an answer for you. Uh, I don't have an answer for that for you today, but I will get one, try to get one by the end of today. Uh, Medicare regulations um, created certain exceptions during the pandemic. I need to check to see if they're still in force or if federal guidance has changed on, on those matters. Otherwise, it's a, it's a payment issue and the Department of Health generally does not comment on, on payment, uh, which is why we did not submit testimony, um, but it is an important question that I'll do my best to get answered for you. So, so I, I understand that it is, it is a payment, but we should inform patients even after, if we pass this law, that if they have appointments using telehealth that's audio only, they may be on the hook because the insurance company won't pay. So there is a notice requirement, yeah? Thank you. Understood. I'm, I've jotted that down in my notes and I'll try to get some comments back to you by the end of today. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, members, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna to move to the next measure on the agenda, SB 628. Uh, SB 628 relating to the transition of the Oahu Regional Healthcare System from the HHSC into the Department of Health. This commences the transfer of the Oahu Regional Healthcare System in its entirety from HHSC to the Department of Health. Uh, and uh, includes language on the transfer. Uh, testifying first, we have the Attorney General offering comments. Uh, HHSC, Sean Sonata in support. Uh, good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee members. Sean Sonata on behalf of the Oahu Region. Uh, the Oahu Region st stands in strong support of SB 628. Uh, collectively with the Department of Health, we do believe that this will lead uh, to more protection for our long-term care operations, while at the same time enabling, enabling us to be more efficient in implementing new programs on our campuses, uh, particularly in the area of, of mental health services. Uh, we understand that there's going to be a lot of amendments necessary to this bill and the other companion bills in the House, um, but we're working very diligently with the Department of Health to to try and make this bill very viable and very feasible. Uh, we have provided some uh, amendments for your consideration. I believe the Department of Health did file them in their testimony. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify and I'll be available for any questions. Thank you, Sean. Uh, next in support, we have Queens Health Systems. Chair JC Mike Yelenic on behalf of Queens. Uh, we'll stand our written uh, testimony in support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Also in support, University of Hawaii, uh, the HGEA offering comments, and late testimony in support from the Department of Health. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members. Uh, apologize for the late testimony. The uh, department stands in super strong support of this measure. And as Sean was describing uh, from Oahu region, we are uh, working diligently to make sure that all of the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted for this. So stand ready for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members, that's all the testimony we've received. Is there anyone else who would like to testify? Okay, seeing none, questions? Okay, we're gonna to move to the next measure on the agenda, SB 1333 relating to the Uniform Controlled Substances Act this measure removes uh, cannabidiol drugs that have been approved by the US FDA uh, from the list of Schedule V substances for consistency with federal laws. Testifying for Greenwich Biosciences, Nahilani Webster. Uh, thank you, unmuted. Um, Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee, Nahalani Webster testifying on behalf of Greenwich Biosciences in support of this measure. We just want to add that Epidiolex is currently the only FDA approved plant-derived prescription cannabinoid product. It is unique in that it was for the treatment of two very rare forms of childhood onset epilepsy, lennox gasto and Dravet syndrome. It also recently got approved for tubular cirrhosis as well. Um, descheduling will bring it in conformance with recent updates to federal law um, and make 
accessibility improved for patients in the state of Hawaii. Thank you for the opportunity to testify and available if you have questions. Thank you very much. That's all the testimony we've received on this. Uh, is there anyone else on the call who would like to testify? And seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, we're gonna move to the next measure, SB 923 relating to pools. This defines swimming pool for the purposes of administrative rules to mean impervious artificial bodies of water used for swimming, diving, or recreational bathing or therapy. Uh, we have one piece of testimony on this measure from the Department of Health. Hi, good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Erin Miyasaki with the Department of Health and the department stands on our written testimony. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's the only testimony I believe we've received on this measure. Is there anyone else on the call who would like to testify on SB 923? Chair, this is Mike Yosu on behalf of Hawakalei Corporation. I submitted late testimony. Uh, you know, I don't have it on our list, but I will note it for the record and make sure that it is included in the testimony packet today. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. Are there any other testifiers on the call? Okay, members, any questions? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna to move to the next measure, SB 971, relating to emergency powers. This authorizes the governor to ensure the continued operation of medical facilities during times of health or pandemic emergencies. First up for Queens Health Systems, uh, Colette Masanaga offering comments. Uh, Chair uh, J.C. Mechanic here uh, for Queens uh, in place of uh, Colette. We just want to stand our written testimony noting our uh, concerns with Section 1A1, uh, specifically the circumstances in which um, these powers would be utilized and also the duration of these powers. Um, we're here to answer any questions and uh, thanks for letting us testify. Thank you very much. Next, we have the Healthcare Association of Hawaii. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we would just echo the same concerns as the previous testifier uh, regarding Section 1A1, um, similar questions, um, I think, for us. But we would also just like to note um, that uh, several of our members um, have expressed um, appreciating the intent of Section 1A2 uh, regarding um, some discretion re uh, related to elective surgeries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, offering late testimony, Hawaii Pacific Health. And they also offered similar comments. That's all the testimony I believe we've received on this measure. Members, any questions? Okay, if not, we are going to move to the next measure, which is the last measure on the agenda, SB 240 relating to mask and quarantine violations. This limits the first offense violations of a governor's emergency proclamation requiring wearing cloth face coverings to a fine of not more than $500. Uh, first up, the Attorney General's office. Actually, they're not first. The Public Defender's Office is first in support. Thank you, Chair, uh, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, this, uh, uh, my name is James Todd. I'm with the Office of the Public Defender. Uh, we support the intent of this bill. Uh, regarding the mask orders, uh, we think all violations, including repeat violations, should be treated as a civil infraction, similar to uh, the traffic violations or traffic infractions. I think right now it just takes too long uh, to prosecute a case, uh, it would be much uh, uh, simpler, more efficient, uh, waste any resources. If we, if they just, if the individuals receive a ticket, they could put it in the, uh, put their fine in the envelope and mail it off, or pay it by, uh, you know, online or on the phone. Even these days, or go down in person and pay the fine. I think most people will, would uh, would take advantage of that. Uh, and as for repeat. Uh, violators. I'm going to make this akin to the uh, like seatbelt violations. I know people who violated seatbelts once or twice. I don't know anyone that has, you know, three, four, five, you know, 
repeat offenders in such that case. I think people, after paying a, a set fine, I don't know, whatever this um, uh, the, leg the legislature sets at $100 or $50, whatever it is, after a while, people are going to be tired of writing checks out uh, for for uh, being unmasked. So um, other than that, um, I'm available for questions later. Thank you, Mr. Tabe. Uh, he, uh, the public defender's office uh, were the only testifier was the only testifier who indicated that they would be present. We have a significant number of individuals who submitted testimony. And so I'm going to read their names off uh, into the record uh, and note their position. So beginning with the attorney general's office who was in opposition. Uh, offering supportive testimony, we have the Department of Health uh, and Stephanie Austin. Offering comments, we have the Hawaii, uh, State of Hawaii Judiciary and uh, other individuals offering opposition testimony, Levani Loma, Craig Danzi, Yulia Muzchenko, Dwayne Sosa, Michelle Kerr, Kyle Kaiser, Alice Abelanita, Amber Tren Trenezki, Claire Ortega, Adam Lipka, Rasa Fournier, Cameron Hewins, Kevin Ortega. Also offering late testimony and support, we have the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association, Hawaii Quarantine Kapu Breakers, Sandra Castell, Cheryl Nakamura, Keke Manera, offering late comments. We have Tina Yamaki from the Retail Merchants of Hawaii, Teresa Ocampo, and offering opposition testimony late. We have Julia Yano, Mar Mary Smart, Hiinai Tajan, Robert Abel, Jessica Diaz, Maata Tukuafu, Brandon Weigel, Lauren Weigel, Anuhea Maeda, Amy Yoshioka, Jonathan Yoshioka, Sai Surya Kumar, Tara Amao, Elizabeth Diamond, Teresa Sharman, Jennifer Noel, Carlin Osorio, Susan Danforth, Gary Cordery, Alana Surya Kumar. Surya Kumar, Gabriel Osorio, Kelsey, Aaron Yunt, Lois Young, Bernard Mendonca, Maricris Digalazo, Tihane Lopez, Julie King, Isabel Esperito, Kaimanu Takuyama, Leilani Diga, Mali Gela, Daryl Gela, Renee Dipperink, Deeper Rink, Kareen Makahilahila, Mark White, Karen Hopper, Brett Kalbis, Nicole A, Crystal Valencia, Lori Fibo Santiago, Vanessa McDonald, Nelly Paikokui, and Tiana Lolotai. Those are all the individuals I have who testified. Is there anyone else on the call who would like to testify in this measure? Seeing none, members, are there any questions? Senator San Buenaventura. Thank you. Um, James Tabe, public defender, since you're the only live testimony. Did you see the judiciary's testimony on this? No, I have not seen anyone's testimony on this. So Okay. Uh, so let me ask you this question, okay? So I submitted this bill based upon the, um, the demand from various sources of an actual special session to fix the over 60,000 mass violation citations. And it surprised me that the governor did not even submit an administration bill when there's all this demand from various sources for a special session. So the judiciary claims that if we make this a civil infraction per, your re per public defender's request, that they are going to need $40,000 for development testing and software and that it requires a new type of case. So do you, the, if we make it like a parking ticket, like you said, 
Do, does the judiciary need this forty thousand dollars? Can't they just? Um, can't we just make it like a parking ticket? Senator, I don't think you really want me to answer for the judiciary because I have no idea how much it would cost them to implement uh, their this process. I know there's another bill, SB 1119, uh, that's uh, working way, way it's through. So um, I just gotta have okay. to say, I don't know. <laughs> okay, thank you. Members, are there any other questions? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna recess for decision-making, recess. Okay, we are going to reconvene this Monday, February 8th, uh, 1 p.m. health agenda for decision making. First item on the agenda is SB 1153, which is the emergency appropriation for uh, emergency medical services. Uh, my recommendation is to blank out the appropriation amount and defect the effective date of this measure to July 1st, 2050. Members, any discussion? Seeing none, Vice Chair SD1, Chair votes aye. Vice Chair, you are on mute. There I am. I, I think I'm live now. Uh, the recommendation of the Chair on Senate Bill 1153 is to uh, pass with amendments. Correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, Chair votes how? Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Uh, Senator Moriwaki? Aye. Senator San Bonaventura? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Thank you. Uh, Chair, your, recommend, your recommendation is adopted. Uh, all voting aye. Thank you very much. Next measure is SB 1156, which is an emergency appropriation for the uh, COVID-19 vaccination plan. Uh, the recommendation is to move this bill out with a defective effective date of July 1st, 2050. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair. The recommendation is to pass 1156, Senate Bill 1156 with amendments. Uh, Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye, Senator Moriwaki. Aye. Senator San Buenaventura. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Recommendations adopted, Chair. Thank you very much. Next sorry to interrupt, Senator. Could, could you also announce technical amendments? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there, are, uh, there are also technical amendments that will be made on that bill, SB 1156. Okay, uh, moving along, SB 1157. This is an emergency appropriation to the Department of Health. This is a contingency fund for uh, pandemic operations. Uh, my recommendation here is to again, blank out the appropriation amounts and defect the effective date uh, to July 1st, 2050. Um, I can't see the tech check here. Do we have techs? Yes, we do. Okay, and there are also gonna be technical amendments. Uh, so SD1. Members, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, uh, Vice Chair, Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye. Of the other three members of the committee on, on the call, any uh, reservations or no votes? Hearing none, I'll cast it. Uh, I vote for all members. Uh, measures adopted, Chair. Thank you very much. Next measure is SB 1117, which is an emergency appropriation to the governor's office for COVID operations. Uh, same recommendation, blanking out the appropriation amounts and defecting the effective date. Uh, do we have any technical amendments while I, while I try and pull it up? Yes, there are technical amendments. Also technical amendments. Members, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair SD1, Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Moriwaki. Aye. Senator Sam Buenaventura. 
Sorry, aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Measures adopted, Chair. Thank you very much. Next measure, SB 1234. Uh, this authorizes uh, the use of rainy day funds for uh, PPE and other items. I'm gonna recommend that we add COVID-19 tests to the list of items available for purchase with the appropriation, blanking out the specific amount and defecting the effective date to July 1st, 2050. There are also technical amendments. Uh, members, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, uh, SD1, uh, Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Moriwaki? Aye. Senator San Buenaventura? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Measures adopted, Chair. Thank you very much. The next measure is SB 1018. This is a pilot project to reorganize the Department of Health. I'm gonna recommend that we accept the Department of Health amendments that we expand the pilot project out to also include the Environmental Health Administration, the Health Resources Administration, and the Office of the Director. Uh, there are also, I believe there are, um, oh, no technical amendments there. And, Oh, pursuant to the discussion in the, in the hearing, we're going to move, uh, remove the procurement exemptions uh, in this measure as well and defect the effective date. Uh, members, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, uh, SD1, Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Moriwaki? Aye. Senator San Buenaventura? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Thank you, Chair, your measure, uh, the measures adopted. Thank you very much. This next measure is SB 1231. This is related to the State Health Planning Development Agency. This is one of the unpleasant bills that we are going to need to address the terrible budget situation that we're facing due to the pandemic. Uh, I understand there are a lot of individuals and organizations that are concerned about this bill. So what I'm going to recommend we do is make changes to ensure uh, that the certificate of need process remains intact. We are going to amend all references uh, in all the provisions uh, in the bill uh, proposing that um, mandatory functions be changed to permissive. So all the references to may will be changed back to shall, uh, but all the references to uh, the agency um, all the shall provisions applicable to the state health planning development agency, we're gonna add or the department of health uh, to that language. So all of the certificate of need provisions are going to continue to be mandatory, but they can be executed by SHIPTA or the department of health. Uh, we're gonna add a five year sunset to this bill. And hopefully when things turn around and we emerge from the pandemic, we can revisit this issue. I'm also gonna recommend that we adopt section one of the house vehicle uh, that was just adopted last week. That's HB 224HD1, which lapses the special fund money into the general fund and defect the effective date to July 1st, 2050. Members, any questions? Discussion? Seeing none, uh, do we have no technical amendments? Okay, uh, SD1, uh, Vice Chair, the Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Moriwaki? Aye. Senator San Buenaventura? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. aye. Chair, your recommendations have been adopted. SD1 on Senate Bill 1231. Thank you very much. The next measure, SB 138, uh, proposes uh, an increase to the cigarette tax. I'm going to recommend that we move this measure out as an SD1. There are technical amendments. We're also gonna blank out uh, the rate increase amount and the disposition of revenues uh, proposed in section three. In section three, I'd also like to add a blank general fund provision uh, and defect the effective date. And in the committee report, I'd like to note the request of the Department of Taxation that the implementation date be delayed to the end of the calendar year. 
Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, uh, SD1, chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Uh, Vice chair votes aye. Senator Moriwaki? Aye. Senator Sam Buenaventura? Aye. Aye. Senator Ventura? San Buenaventura? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Measures adopted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next measure, SB 970 related to telehealth. One of these nice bills where everybody agrees. There are technical amendments that we will be adopting. Uh, otherwise, I recommend that we uh, move this bill out. Uh, SD1, uh, Vice Chair, Chair votes aye. Uh, Vice Chair votes aye, Senator Moriwaki. Aye. Senator San Buenaventura. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Chair, your recommendations have been adopted. Thank you very much. Next measure, Senate Bill 1258. You know, this bill needs, uh, you know, I think after the, the testimony and the, the discussion, it's pretty clear the bill uh, needs some work, uh, but I do uh, recommend that we go ahead and defect the effective date and uh, move this bill out uh, to the next committee for continued discussion. Uh, members, any questions, concerns? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair, SD1, Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye, Senator Moriwaki. Aye. Senator Sam Buenaventura. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Chair, your recommendation has been accepted. Thank you very much. The next measure, SB 628, uh, this is related to the transition of uh, the HHS Oahu back to the Department of Health. I think this is a very important measure uh, that warrants um, our consideration. Uh, we're going to start by accepting the, well, you know, actually, um, uh, because there are a number of pieces of testimony offering a significant number of amendments, uh, what I'm going to recommend is that we defer decision making on this measure to Wednesday, February 10th at uh, 1.30 p.m. And uh, we're also going to publish uh, a proposed Senate draft that incorporates the recommendations of the Department of Health and the Attorney General's office so that the public gets to see them and the members also have some time to take a look at them before we vote. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none. Uh, we are going to defer decision making to Wednesday, February 10th at 1.30 p.m. Okay, next measure, SB 1333. Uh, this is related to controlled substances. I'm gonna recommend that we move this measure out as an SD1 uh, adopting the technical amendments proposed by SMA. Any discussion? Seeing none, SD1, uh, chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Moriwaki? Aye. Senator San Buenaventura? Aye. And uh, Senator Favela? Reservation. Okay. Uh, measure, uh, Chair, your uh, recommendations have been adopted. Thank you very much. Uh, next measure, SB 923, this is related to swimming pools. I think this measure needs a little bit more work before we vote on it. So I'm going to defer decision-making on this measure until Wednesday, February 10th at 1.30. Next measure, SB 971, this is related to uh, the governor's emergency authority in healthcare. You know, after reviewing the, reviewing the testimony and noting the concerns of the testifiers, uh, I'm gonna recommend that we defer this measure. Any discussion? Indefinitely. Uh, yes, defer indefinitely. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. And the last measure, SB 240, this is the mask bill. There were a lot of uh, individuals who testified, which I can appreciate. Uh, and there were also some substantive substantive pieces of testimony from the Attorney General's office and the judiciary. Uh, I'm gonna recommend that we defer this measure. And the reason is that the judiciary specifically mentioned Senate Bill 540 SD1 
as the preferred vehicle uh, to move forward on this, what I think is an important issue. And uh, seeing as how SB 540 uh, proposed SD1 has already been scheduled for public hearing in the Judiciary Committee, uh, there appears to be no need to move this measure forward. So I'm gonna recommend that we defer. Members, any discussion? Okay, great. On that note, thank you very much. We are adjourned.